Washington's Mount Vernon. I'm Sarah Theo, your social media manager, and joining us today is none other than General Washington himself. How are you doing today, General? I am well, and I welcome you and all of our friends to Mrs. Washington's and my farms. Excellent. Uh, we hope that you enjoy your visit. Yeah. Awesome. And we, uh, yesterday, some of you may know, we had uh, some birthday celebrations here for the general. Oh my goodness gracious, we had nigh on 20,000 of people <laughs> here yesterday. We did, a few, of uh, just a few close friends, indeed. Some of you may have joined us, but if you did not, you can join us next, this coming Saturday, for Washington's actual birthday on Saturday, February 22nd. Well, you know, it's interesting you say that, because I was actually born on February 11th. Well. But we changed calendars from the Julian calendar to the Gregorian calendar, and there was a mathematical adjustment. So I now celebrate on February 20 and 2, 22nd. True, true. And we celebrate that day here as well. Oh. So the estate, it will also be free and open to visitors to come and see our special events, come and wish the general a happy birthday, happy natal day. So we hope you can join us then. And in the meantime, we have some downtime here with the general and he's graciously offered to answer any questions you all have today. So please ask them in the comments. Tell us where you're watching from. And in the meantime, general, can you tell us a little bit about how you plan to spend your birthday and maybe how you spent past birthdays? Well, at this age and stage, I would suggest to you that uh, my birthdays tend to be uh, of a more quiet nature, surrounded by friends and family. I have always said that I would rather be with friends and family when, than with the great nabobs and notables of all the courts of Europe. Uh, so I will hopefully have a, a quiet and reflective birthday. Uh, in the past, well, they have been sometimes quiet and sometimes very active. I, I remember the very first public celebration of my natal anniversary. Uh, and that was in the winter of 17 and 78, in the midst of our encampment at the Valley of the Forge. Uh, I had had a long day, the, no recognition of my birthday at all. Uh, I was rather tired. Mrs. Washington had traveled here from Mount Vernon up to Pennsylvania, and she was at the encampment. Uh, I finally, at about half nine o'clock at night, uh, retired to my chambers up on the second floor. Mrs. Washington was in chamber. And uh, I saw that she had a, a mischievous look in her eye, and all of a sudden, as I was removing my regimental coat, I, I heard music wafting from outside. And I looked at her, and she smiled ear to ear, and I walked over to the window, and I raised the window. There were four, five, six hundred soldiers, all standing in a half circle below. And there were musicians from uh, General Henry Knox's artillery band, and they were playing a serenade for me for my birth night. So that was the first public celebration, uh, very memorable indeed. Very good. Well, we have many birthday wishes coming in, General. Oh, lovely. Paige says, happy birthday from North Carolina. Ah, from the Carolinas. Mm -hmm. Wonderful, yeah. wonderful. Have you been there yourself? I have traveled to North Carolina. I have traveled to every one of the original states in this union. I made a promise when I became the chief magistrate, the president of the United States, that uh, I would travel to every single one of the states. And uh, I originally went to New England, uh, and I traveled to every state except one. There was one state that had not yet signed the Constitution. They did ultimately, but they were very, very slow to do so. Rhode Island. <laughs> Uh, so I traveled all to New England except for Rhode Island, and then the next year I traveled down to the south, and of course that included North Carolina. Oh. Uh, I did eventually make it back to Rhode Island. Oh, nice. <laughs> Didn't want to leave the map. Did not. Ricky asked, did you ever go to the Louisiana area? No, I am familiar with it uh, from maps, and uh, it is a critical area. That whole vicinage has changed hands from time to time betwixt the Spanish and the French. Uh, currently, the Spanish hold it, and I would suggest to you that we are having some success in negotiating navigation rights down the Mississippi to the Louisiana vicinage, and that's important because that is how Western citizens get their products to market and such. 
Uh, Mandy said the general did an amazing job in his recent DC videos. She loved it. Remember we took uh, a trip to Ah, the visit to the, the federal city, the District of Columbia. I must tell you, I was, uh, I was speechless. I <laughs> cannot uh, begin to describe the feelings I had uh, over the development of it. It was, well, it was mostly farmland when I picked that point for the permanent seat of the federal government. and. My goodness, what it has become. <laughs> indeed, indeed. If you haven't watched the General's uh, adventures as he takes DC, head over to mountvernon.org slash takes DC to see them all. And we had a question from Diana. She asked what a typical birthday dinner is for you, sir. Well, Mrs. Washington always sees that there is uh, what we refer to as a groaning board, so much food on a table that the table wants to sag. Uh, but we will, uh, of course, uh, hopefully, uh, I will begin my birthday meal with my very favorite food in the whole of this world. Food that is only available on months that have an R in it. Oysters. Uh, and then there will be maybe two, three different types of meats and uh, fresh vegetables that we have grown during the growing season and that we keep in our root cellar here. Uh, and hopefully the meal will conclude with one of her either trifles, which is wonderful, or uh, perhaps one of her remarkable cakes, which has untold pounds of butter in it. <laughs> or perhaps my very favorite, which is iced cream. Have you ever had iced cream? I have. It's one of my favorite desserts as well. I love iced cream. <laughs> nice. It sounds pretty good. So your, your favorite foods you would be having on your, your birthday. Hopefully. 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 Well, I'm hungry. I'm ready. Do you think I could come? You're most welcome. All right. Excellent. <laughs> Um, we've had a lot of other birthday wishes. Huzzah! Well, that's lovely. <laughs> how, so you mentioned your first birthday celebration, but how did you normally, did you ever celebrate your birthday, or is it normally not a day of celebration? Well, what I mentioned was my first public celebration. Right. Uh, uh, I don't really remember my first birthday celebration, <laughs> but uh, typically Fair. it is a rather quiet day and uh, a work day like 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 every other day, mm. by and large. Okay. There is not a, a great deal of uh, to-do or fanfare on my natal anniversary. Uh, and that's not unusual. Most people don't have much in the way of celebration. Okay. At least in my day. Yes, yes, yes. What did you celebrate in your day? What were the celebratory... Well, of course, uh, we celebrate a wedding anniversary. That is rather remarkable. Mrs. Washington and I just enjoyed our 40th anniversary. Oh, there are anniversary. very few friends and contemporaries of ours that have reached that milestone. And uh, here now in United America, we celebrate Independence Day in a very, very wonderful way. Uh, you know, back in that day in 1776, you may or may not know this, but the question of our independence was voted upon on July 2nd. 1776. It was adopted on July 4th. Mr. John Adams, who is now the chief magistrate of the country, Mr. Adams said that July 2nd will long be remembered in this country with great illuminations and parades. Uh, he was only off by two days. Yeah, close. Close enough. Right. <laughs> um, Lily, Liliette asked, I hear you make beer there. Does it sell well? Well, we make beer uh, for our own use. We do not sell the beer. We make uh, ciders, both uh, light ciders and hard ciders. And uh, we also, of course, distill whiskey here at Mount Vernon. So there are all manner of libations that uh, are produced here at Mount Vernon. The one wonderful libation that has eluded every attempt of ours to successfully make it is wine. We have been unsuccessful in growing palatable wine-making grapes. There are wild grapes that grow everywhere in Virginia, but you don't want to make wine out of those. Hmm. Terrible. Interesting. And what is your favorite libation? My favorite libation, I would reckon, is Madeira wine. Uh, I greatly enjoy the product of the island of Madeira. Oh, okay. We celebrated, you talked about celebration, we celebrated the signing of the Declaration of American Independence with Madeira wine, the Constitution signing with Madeira wine, and we do enjoy our Madeira wine. <laughs> Very good. Well, Chuck has a, uh, a question. Oh, I'm sorry. Stephen has a question. Tough one. Have you ever forgiven Benedict Arnold? Have I ever forgiven Benedict Arnold? Uh, I understand what went into his personal decision and his... Uh, 
actions, his treason, but uh, I cannot forgive his actions because he not only betrayed me, which I probably could get past, but he betrayed the band of brothers that he served with and most importantly he betrayed his nation. And so that is, I am afraid, beyond forgiveness. And Well, we will let that one go. <laughs> yeah, that was a tough question. No, it was not difficult. It's just that it is, uh, stirs up memories and emotions that um, are, are not easy ones. Indeed, indeed. Well, Matthew asks, had you not taken the presidency, what do you think would have happened? Had I not uh, answered the call of my country? I, I suppose that is what he said. That is impossible, first of all. <laughs> I have always, always answered the call of my country, uh, sometimes with reticence, but always with love. Um, but had I not been given the opportunity, I likely would have continued as a delegate for Virginia at various congresses. Uh, but I would have retired here at Mount Vernon, uh, I call it retiring. It is a very work-filled day each and every single day, but we call it retirement because I would be away from public service by and large. Very good. Well, uh, Mary Jane says you're my favorite president. Just well, she is comments. my favorite citizen. <laughs> very nice. Oh, Mary Jane also visited in 2000. Thank you for sharing your home, she says. You should come back, Mary Jane. Yeah, give us some more notice next time. We'll yeah. put you up for the night. <laughs> Uh, Mandy says, I've had your whiskey at our Whiskey Rebellion in Cumberland, and it is quite good. She speaks well of your whiskey. I appreciate her approbation. <laughs> I'm not quite certain I would call the whiskey quite good. The, the whiskey that I produce here is, um, well, it, it can be rough stuff. Uh, it's for medicinal purposes, you understand. Although we sell every drop, and people enjoy it greatly, and, well, perhaps it's not rough stuff at all. <laughs> She may have let it sit for a little longer. Well, it doesn't, it doesn't do age in the bottle. Right. It has right. to age in the cast. That's right. Um, Josh, Josh asks, has Alexander Hamilton ever visited Mount Vernon? And if so, what, has, what, his, what was his impression since he is from the New York region? Well, it's a long question. The answer is no. Yeah. <laughs> he, did, he never traveled. We had many visitors here, but uh, Colonel Hamilton was not one of them. Forgive me. I keep calling him Colonel Hamilton. <laughs> He has recently been promoted to General Hamilton. Mm. Old habits die hard. Indeed. So who has visited you here at Mount Vernon that some of us may be familiar with? Well, of course, uh, we've had uh, Mr. Madison here. We've had uh, Mr. Jefferson here. Uh, let us not forget uh, one of our most favored guests, the Marquis de Lafayette. Uh, we have had all manner of citizen come, both of note and, uh, and typical citizens. If you, if you arrived here, uh, perhaps with a letter of introduction, uh, you would be welcomed, and you would be welcomed for uh, three days, let us say. I believe it was Dr. Franklin that said fish and company. After three days, they both, well, we'll leave that uh, unstated. It's a good one, yeah. <laughs> uh, Lawrence asked, what was the reason you chose your VP? What was the reason that I uh, chose? Your vice president, I'm sorry. Oh, I did not choose the vice president. The, the Constitution in my time, it may be slightly different in your day, but the Constitution calls for an electoral college. Each uh, electoral delegate gets two votes, and the person with the most votes becomes the president, and the person with the second highest tally of votes becomes the vice president. So it's not as if I chose him or picked him, although I was very happy to stand with Mr. Adams, he is a good and great man and a wonderful patriot. Very good. Has he ever visited Mount Vernon? Mr. Adams has not. Too bad. Well, Gene asks, speaking of Mount Vernon, uh, he would like to know, was Mount Vernon under any threat during the war? Uh, it, interesting question. Of mm -hmm. course, they knew that this was my home. Mm -hmm. uh, there was one incident, and you might have expected there would have been more, but there was one incident in which a number of British frigates hoved to in the center of the Patamac River. And officers of those frigates, along with their marine escorts, 
came ashore. I was away fighting the war, but my cousin, Lund Washington, he was managing the estate and the farms, and he greeted them. They demanded that he provision their frigates with all fresh supplies, or they would burn the house down to the ground. And he, thinking he was doing the right thing, provisioned all the ships fully. He then wrote me a letter telling me proudly that he was happy to have saved Mount Vernon from the torch. Uh, I wrote back to him, and uh, <clears throat> you don't really want to know what I wrote back to him, but suffice <laughs> to say I would have rather seen my home in ashes than to have us supply and aid the enemy. Mm, I'm glad, we're glad that it did not go to ashes. Well, there's one side of me that is as well, but still, <laughs> if you think about it. That's true. That's true. Um, Ashley asks, how did it feel to be the first president of a brand new nation? Uh, the word is frightening. Uh, I remember writing a letter to General Henry Knox, uh, a friend of mine and the commander of artillery during the War of American Independence. And I wrote to Henry that as I move towards the executive seat of government, I feel like a condemned culprit being led to his own execution, because this was a path that no one had ever walked on before, and the eyes of the world were upon us, because the entire rest of the world believed that man could not govern himself. And so this was a grand experiment, and I was, in a word, frightened. But the experiment continues, and another birthday year continues, and so we will hope through the grace of divine providence this whole experiment and many birthdays will continue.